Um, when I became mayor, straightening out uh, the city's housing department was one of my most pressing issues facing the city and one of my top priorities. Um, it was clear that significant changes needed to be made in order to restore confidence in the department faced with numerous challenges. In 2012, the city hired an outside agency to come in, take a fresh look at the department, and take over operations of the department. That agency was called, is called the Community Redevelopment Associates of Florida, not related in any way to our Community Redevelopment Agency, although they're both called CRA. Um, at the time, I made it clear to them my expectations and demands and the, that the department must operate efficiently, effectively, and above reproach. Every T must be crossed, every case handled in strict accordance with the rules and regulations involving the handling of both city and federal dollars. The company has been able to improve some of the areas in the department over the course of the last two years. It has become more and more clear, however, that the company is not able to attend to a department as large and complex as ours. The city has tried to work with them to improve performance. Uh, in fact, the city commission at one point made it really clear to everyone that their work needed to improve. We asked that additional city hall staff be provided to ensure the workload be handled properly, uh, and no additional staff was provided. Um, this week, tipping point was reached when it came to my attention that deadlines were missed, applications were not properly handled, and questions have been raised about when certain documents were signed and the explanations shed light on what are continued flaws in the oversight of the system. The issues were raised by a member of the media, and while I appreciate their efforts, the fact that these problems were not brought to my attention internally before the inquiry is really not acceptable. As a matter of course, I do not review housing applications, but when it came to my attention that serious questions were being raised, I immediately ordered a review of the cases in question, and I actually sat down and looked at them myself. The CRA, um, uh, you know, the Community Redevelopment Associates, uh, has helped so many residents uh, 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 over the last couple of years, but as, as of this time, it's not meeting my expectations. As a result, today I'm announcing that I'm terminating the contract with the company brought, to run, brought in to run to the department, and their departure is effective June 1st. An RFQ for the replacement company will be on the streets within the next few weeks. We will be looking for a company that has the capacity to handle the volume of work here at the city and can do what I asked for, asked for over two years ago. Uh, it's a shame that all the hard work that has been done here in the city um, and what we have done for our residents every day might be momentarily overshadowed by any of this. The inability to meet the demands of the workload and the complexity of this department uh, is unacceptable. That's my statement. When you, yes, when you uh, started to review the, the documents, what was it that stood out in your mind right immediately when you were reviewing? Well, um, there was like, uh, definitely uh, the process wasn't being handled the way it needed to be handled. There were last minute um, signatures, um, and um, uh, you know, it was hard to reconcile some of the dates uh, in terms of due dates for some applications. And, and it is a very complex system, and um, as I said, we have asked them uh, for more help here, that we needed more people to run it, and uh, we were never afforded more people. So um, I think it just um, our system is complex and, and uh, large. How many houses units are there in the um, it's not just management of housing units. It's b bigger than that. It's, um, you know, we have built close to 32 new houses in Coleman Park over the last couple of years, but it's all of the, the um, uh, rehab funds. It's uh, HAPA housing for persons with AIDS. Um, it's, it's a very, very complex department. Well, we're going to look for um, some particular expertise in managing certain portions of um, the work that's done, like the HOPWA portion, um, certainly the, the development of uh, houses, and then the sale and marketing of the houses, um, and a company that has uh, enough people to, to do what, we ha what has to get done here. Have 
came aboard uh, what year? Um, I think that they've been here two years. It's Community Redevelopment Associates, and it's very confusing because they call, we call them CRA, and it's not has, doesn't have anything to do with our CRA in any way. Can you see on the record that it was our my colleagues' inquiries that started that did this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was inquiries through the Palm Beach Post that brought this to our attention, um, and um, you know we have had. We have been watching this for a while, and we've asked for more help for a while. Um, but this, as I said, w it was the tipping point. And how many people were on their staff that were giving them uh, that were giving the city resources compared to how many you think you need? Well, we had um, two full-time people from them. Uh, we have um, other people who are employed directly by the city as well. So the department has um, probably. A, seven, eight, or nine people. I'm not exactly sure how many we have that are employed by the city, but we had two full-time people pretty much. And, and it's, we just need more than that. So with the issue of we just need more than that, does this come down again to the city hires a company, it's contracted, it's bid it out, and then a few years later we find out that the money's not enough, the company's complaining with how many resources it gets from the city. I mean, we've seen this time and time again, whether it's with the city, with the county, with transit, I mean, it, it just happens. So how can we avoid this with the new company? Well, um, one of the things that we're going to be really clear about is um, the uh, uh, deliverables that we want, and that will be put in the RFQ. So we're going to be very clear about the deliverables and our expectations, and any agreement that we have with any um, company will have uh, timelines and deliverables. And, you know, it, it's... Um, <clears throat> It, it happens as part of the management of a large organization um, that some things work out and some don't. Uh, and you know the, the, the important part is that we recognize it and move forward and make sure we get somebody in here who can do the job. The other thing, I, what I happens should, with management of I large... I should clarify, though, is the resources were not being provided by the city. The resources were, we asked the company to provide right. the resources, right. the company didn't provide. And did, the and did the company not provide them because they were saying, we're not getting enough money, we're not, you know, we just, the money was there, but... Yeah, basically they were unresponsive. Okay. So with my question then, you said it happens with large managements of large organizations, these things happened, true, but then what happens is you got such a big organization, you got a new company, you're going to have disruption. So all these people that rely on community redevelopment associates, how are they going to be uprooted? Well, they are now? not. Um, you know, we were going to continue operations as it is, and the fact of the matter is um, people are still getting their services and have been getting their services. We've got new houses built out there. We've got people who otherwise could not have afforded to own a house who are currently owning a house. So that's not to say that the work hasn't been done. It's been done, and um, we have home ownership happening. Um, we have uh, all of our... Um, all of our paperwork is into HUD and, and we're moving forward. We just n need to be able to do that in a more efficient manner. So I, I, I want to be really clear that I don't believe that services have been interrupted. And they will not be. And are they officially done with work with the city or is there a target date? June 1st is the target date. So June 1st, they'll be moving out. The city will take over the complete complex, you, your words, complex management. How long will it be before another company can be hired, the contract can be put out? You know, well, what are we looking at? Yeah, we're going to bring in some people immediately, uh, and then um, we'll put the RFQ out probably next week, you know, give people 60 days to respond and have some, some decision, and then three months probably. How long was their contract for? Um, it, w it was a three-year contract. Uh, so it could just be canceled? We're able to, um, part of the agreement with them was that we could cancel it with five days notice um, for convenience. Um, and we're giving them until June 1st. So there's no, no they're not going to sue you guys for canceling contract? Who knows? But it could. <laughs> You never know. So that would extend this three-month process, this June 1st deadline. I certainly have disruption. Yeah, I certainly hope they don't. And I th we've had a good relationship with them. Um, I, and I really want to be clear that um, they have accomplished many good things for our city. They've cleaned up years and years and years of paperwork that needed desperately to be cleaned up. Um, they've really, um, you know, they, 
we have houses that have been built under their leadership and, and people are living in them. So they've, they've done the job we've asked them to do. We just need more people to do it. I mean, that's part of what we're going to have to look at. No, I'm sorry. I just have to ask this. So right now, you just said they've really done the job that we've asked them to do. They've done it a great job. They've accomplished everything. And I'm thinking as a lawyer now, if I have a contract with you, and how much is that year worth? The remaining contract, what's the worth of the contract? I, I can't tell you Millions? that number. Millions? No. Hundreds? Thousands? Um, Thousands of dollars, right? If you cancel yeah, the contract then. and the contract is sued upon, you have to pay the remainder of the contract. So now... You just gave the other side reasons to say, look, we've accomplished everything under the terms of the contract. Why are we being canceled? We have a good Because we have a clause that says they can be canceled for convenience. We're not canceling them for cause. We're canceling them for convenience. And what does that mean for convenience? I mean, what are the terms for convenience? Usually there's it just, terms It just says that. So I'm not a lawyer. I'm not going to get into a legal discussion with you. Okay. But that's it. You can just cancel for convenience. We can. Can you say how, if, if at all, this will affect the, uh, you're still waiting on federal to make up their mind about the, all that other stuff. This That'll is, all uh, move along. This is un completely unrelated? Yeah, no, it'll, yes, it's unrelated. And are you able to say, is there anything new in that? Right? No. Okay, what other questions do you have? I know earlier in the week uh, there was talk uh, about outsourcing uh, other departments within the city. Where are we with that? I think it's specific vehicle maintenance. Right. The recommendation at that point was to um, outsource certain portions of the fleet department, um, which would include parts, um, small engine repair, and diesel engine, and there was a third one. I can't remember. Um, and we're moving forward with those three, not outsourcing the whole department, but there are three sort of discrete units um, that we feel like we can do um, comfortably uh, uh, outsource. We, we're not projecting any savings. What we're projecting is better service. So we can then take, the, the study showed that we were nine to 12 people short in our fleet department. Um, you know, when we had, over the last few years, the budget issues that we've had to deal with, our workforce went down from 1,800 people to 1,500 people. So 300 jo fewer jobs um, and one of the departments that took a hit was the fleet department. Um, so <clears throat> the study showed that we're very under-resourced in terms of staff. So what we'll do is we'll take the staff from those departments who are outsourcing and move them into areas um, where we're under-resourced. Other questions? The last meeting in May will bring a recommendation. Yes. Has everything gone to plan with that? Are you, are you happy with the process? Was there anything that has been approved? Everything's working the way we wanted to. And that's the commissioner's meeting? The last commissioner's meeting? Right? I'm sorry? You said commissioner's meeting? That's the meeting that... Or uh, the commission meeting, yes. Um, May 27th, I think it is. It's not on Monday because Monday's a holiday, so it's on Tuesday. Mayor, what's the, uh, the status of the... Uh, bicycle rental racks. Those <laughs> were, I remember, a couple of months ago, and I haven't seen any of those. <clears throat> We're moving forward with a, it's, it's being handled through the DDA, and they're moving forward with a contract and expect to have it up and running in the fall. Oh, okay, fall. Good. Yeah, that was always the goal. Um, there was an article this weekend regarding the uh, baseball. Uh-huh. Uh, Um, the city is not in the business of baseball. Uh, um, however, we will continue to work with the county and the teams to see what we can do to make this work. That's new. That we're going to, because all along you've been adamant, we're not going to give the land for free. We're not going to give. That's not, our intention is not to give the land for free. Okay, but that is different than what we've heard before. Is that fair? Um, no, I don't think so. I think uh, what I'm saying to you is we do not intend to give the land for free. Um, and we will continue to work with the county and the teams to make this happen.
So 30 million gap between what the state can fund, what the county can fund, and what the team can fund. Is the city has the city been asked to no. contribute to that 30 million? Yeah. No. Uh, open Skies Radio. This is one from a colleague. Uh, open Skies Radio. I guess the Miami Police Department had dropped the service because they they weren't happy with it. Just your reaction to that. Well, I don't think they've actually dropped the service. I just had a meeting um, with the folks from Harris this morning. Uh, they continue to work in Miami-Dade, um, and their assessment was um, that there were certainly training issues with the dispatch um, uh, dispatchers and uh, um, the officers. Uh, so my uh, discussion with them was, uh, I hope that we have learned something from this and that you will be able to translate that to when we do our implementation um, and make sure that those glitches, whatever they are, don't happen here. And um, they seem that to confident that they have it, um, they understand what happened. Uh, and they are continuing to work in Miami-Dade uh, on this P25. Um, this is going to be a really um, big implementation, a complex implementation. When you move to digital, um, there are always going to be glitches. So I think we have to expect that there will be ups and downs as we go through this implementation, just as long as we can address them in a timely fashion and get through them. Mayor, can you just go back to this, uh, your first thing? Can you just kind of succinctly, in just a few sentences, explain exactly what was brought to your attention about the feelings of the company? Well, I, and I don't want to say failings of the company. I think that um, what I learned from your colleagues and from reviewing um, the documents is that there was a lot of last minute running around. And when the last minute running around was taking place, mistakes were made. Um, and, um, you know, that's just not acceptable. with fraud was there any concern no. with you said mistakes were made was that was there a loss of money could mistakes no. and deadlines miss no. lose the city could lose money no. no so this wasn't a performance issue no okay to the extent that we need more people you know when you talk about mistakes we're talking about say contracts not being signed right this <clears throat> yeah i mean contracts were signed at the very last minute and um, but but they got in under the wire and um, we were able to move forward with it. So at the end of the day, this is just the company didn't provide you the people resources to be able to handle the workload. I, I just expect more. You know, I, I really want this to be an exemplary department, uh, and um, I, you know, I expect more. Can I ask you? Uh, in October, I remember the workshop downstairs. Uh, you and your colleagues grilled these guys pretty good. It got a little testy. It sure did. Um, two things. One is, did that give you a clue that maybe you needed to be finding out that, that maybe these guys weren't doing what you had hoped? And secondly, if that's the case, why did you wait? Why did it take no until my colleagues? <laughs> no, I mean. Well, you know, we've been monitoring it, um, but and and it, we certainly have been talking about what our options are. I think this just sort of pushed us over the edge. Um, we have uh, we're having a groundbreaking on Friday. We have uh, five new houses going in Coleman Park. Uh, you know we have um, uh, you know, other activities that that they're doing. So it, it, things are getting done. Um, but even in October, there was some evidence that you guys weren't happy. There was some things sure. that were setting off things. Yeah. Do you feel that maybe you should have done more at that time? Um, well, we. We did a lot at that time. We talked with the owner of the company. We asked for deliverables and timelines. Um, we monitored uh, all of the work that they were doing. Um, we set out a plan for them to follow. So actions were taken. The official title is Community Redevelopment Associates of Florida. Uh -huh. They're based in Broward County. Okay, any other questions? Um, all the board of Florida seems to be getting a lot of opposition north of here. It seems like they were going through a uh, uh, very happy period where everybody said this is great and now everybody's piling on north of here. 
Um, obviously, uh, West Palm Beach is in a very different situation with having the train station located downtown. Uh, are you as concerned as they are up north about uh, the intersections and the blocking from and the frequency of blocking the trains <coughs> and the safety? Yeah, well, I, we are absolutely concerned about having quiet zones, um, and we have talked, we're, you know, we continue to negotiate with them. We expect quiet zones. We expect um, a, a reliever road, uh, the one that we're ta we've talked about in the past. We expect two pedestrian crossovers um, over the quadrille, um, and um, we're working with them on it. Quiet zones have to be requested by the city, right? I mean, they, the railroad can't even is not even allowed to request a quiet zone. Well, they can they can do make a they can make an intersection a quiet zone once we've requested it. Right. It's just right. a matter about who pays for it. Right. And you know, I'm excited because we got $10 million in the state budget for quiet zones. We have $6.6 .6 million from the MPO for quiet zones, um, and you know. And we have uh, submitted a Tiger Grant for quiet zones. So I'm optimistic. Now, we have 20% of all of the crossings in the whole line from Orlando to Miami. 20% of those crossings are in our city. So we're one of the major um, cities affected. Um, so we, you know, we've spent a lot of time talking to them. We have more crossings than Fort Lauderdale. Well, even if all of North Florida never happens, going to have a tremendous increase in freight traffic because of the expansion of the Port of Miami. So that's... We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you.